Python Pandas for data analysis create stunning reports and impactful analysis today. We're going to start out with this blank notebook. Now, first of all, I'd like to redirect you over to this page here. This is the data set we'll be using for our live data analysis at Kaggle.com. What I'd recommend you do is read through the context, the content, understand the glossary, the code, the discussion, really delve deep into the data. See what other people have done and what kind of information is in here. Down here, we'll see the columns. Now, what I want to do is some EDA, some exploratory data analysis. And the way we're going to do this is just by hitting download. Go and open a Jupyter notebook in that location. And now we can begin. Being that this is a pandas analysis, I'm going to start by importing the pandas library. Once done, I'm going to import my visualization libraries as well, as I want to make sure I can see the data visually. We'll start here with matplotlib and then move to Seaborn for more advanced statistical plotting. Now, once we've run this by hitting run up here or hitting shift enter on your keyboard, and we can see that's run perfectly. We can now import the data frame, the CSV. I'm going to call the data frame DF. And we're going to use pandas. Here's the first case we're going to use it to import or read that CSV file. Now I know the name of the data set, so make sure you have that copy and pasted, but I'll just type it out here. What I'll then do is load the head of the data frame or the first five rows. And in doing this, we'll get a good understanding of how the data is laid out. If we had not already by viewing it on Kaggle. You can see there are a number of different columns here. The first five rows. Brilliant. There's a lot to explore here. Now, I would like to get a bit of a deeper understanding exactly how large this data set is, because actually I, I don't know. So to do that, I'll do df.shape. Wow. So we've got 18 columns and just under 4,000 rows. What I will do next is look at the info. Now, this is really critical to gain a deeper understanding of your data set. So let's do df.info. Now I can see for each of the different columns, their data type and how many null values there are. In fact, this has no null values, which is fantastic. If I wanted to double check that I could, and you'll see there are zero. What can I see there? Primarily object data types, but some integers as well and some floats. So we can use that to compare. Now, um, if I did want a bit of a deeper understanding of each of the different columns, again, I could use the dot describe method. And I will do here. We can see the number of different values in each column. You can see it's all the same. The mean, so the mean age is 44. And right off the bat, we already know that. The mean amount purchased in USD is 60 pounds worth. The average rating is 3.7, so we'll go 4. And typically, people have an average of 25 previous purchases with a minimum of one and a maximum of 50. Great. We've got a really good understanding of our data set just already with this initial view. I want to look at the value counts for different genders, say, rather than just overall. And again, we can do that with pandas. Let's go DF, call the genders column in quotation marks dot value counts. Here we go. Interestingly, there's a lot more men, you know, over double. And we should bear this in mind when doing our analysis. What are the different columns? Well, I could scroll up and count them all here. Or if I wanted it laid out as a simple string, I could just use df dot columns. And I will use that in a bit because what I want to do is sample down this to just a subset of the data for our analysis. Now, what's really useful is to do a group by. What I want to group by is the purchase amount in USD and the category. See how much people are spending on each category. And I'll look at the average of that. 
how would I do that? Again, started by calling the data frame df.rootby category. Make sure you spell it right. And then purchase amount. I'll just copy this up here. Grouping these columns, I want to look at the mean. And as simple as that, we can immediately see this is the average or the mean spent on each of these different categories. If I wanted a deeper understanding of the correlations and their relationships across the data frame, we could simply do df.call. There we go. Easy as that. Not very visual. As a data analyst, I like to present the data in easily digestible ways, hence the name of the channel, Focus Data Digest. To do that, we're going to present this as a heat map. We're going to pull this correlation matrix into a SNS, a Seaborn heat map. Again, df.call. And then we're going to use the C map cool warm. It's just the color from red to blue. And it's what I like, my preference. Again, we'll put anot as true so that we can label each of the boxes. Here we go. You'll see everything, of course, has a 100% relationship with itself. And there's a lot of weak relationships here. It's not good to see. Hmm. But this will inform what I want to look at next. And what I do want to look at next is just cutting down this data set. It's very sizable, and I want to look at just a sample of it. So we'll do that with df is equal to df. Here we go. What I've done here is I've stored it under df. You could call it df2 or otherwise, but these are the columns I wanted to look into. And I'd recommend you choose other ones. Don't necessarily pick these. If you feel more comfortable with following on it exactly as I have, then feel free. However, venturing out, trying this yourself, really experiencing it, is what I'd recommend to get the best understanding of Pandas Python. Because I've broken this down, I want to look at the relationships here. What I'll do first of all is a count plot, a visualization in Seaborn using this subset. Let's look at the seasons by category. How would I do that? Well, like this. And this is specifically a pandas tutorial, so I didn't want to bore you with typing this all out. All we've done is got a count plot that X is going to be season. The data is our data frame, which we've updated. The hue will be category. And I've set a palette. You don't have to do that. I've also set a title in matplotlib. And I've changed the axis of the X titles. I've done that so they just fit in a bit better. Let's run that. Here we go. Some interesting things. Initially, after only just seeing this, I can see that clothing is the highest over all the seasons, followed by accessories. Now, there are some changes. You can see some slight fluctuations on each season by the categories. Another visualization I could do is a bar plot say category uh, by age and we could even bring in a hue of gender now that would be sns.barplot seaborn again i'll type it out but then i'll show you the end result and walk through it fantastic let's hit run up here brilliant so being that we have x as the category again we have all the different categories here whereas up here we used x as season now our x-axis is category and our y is the age from zero to 40. We have the hue of gender. So for each, we can see the difference and the split between male and female. Here, there's a marginal difference. Generally, it seems to be quite similar. It's good to know that. We could even remove the hue. Let's take a look at that here. And again, they all seem very similar. This, there's some variation. And let's try one more visualization or maybe one or two. What I want to do is look at where there's some more variation. And I think using a histogram, I could visualize the distribution of review ratings in a hist plot. Okay, so we've got the X label as review rating and the Y as count. We're doing a hist plot here. I did 10 bins, but we'll see how it looks. And I thought we'd pick the color sky blue. Here we go. 
we can see grouping together these categories of different review ratings and how many there are of each. Again, what I could do is I could go back in to my pandas data frame and review this with group buys. It doesn't have to be a mean. I could do a max. And I could do rather category this. I could do category in gender or purchase amount in gender. Let's try that here. Both have max of 100. What was the mean? Slightly more on females, despite there are more males. What you could do then is begin to add in new columns, such as looking at the percentage of each. It could be interesting to explore, well, what is a typical review out of all the males on average presented as a percentage or the cost or otherwise. I appreciate this isn't fully live. I have chopped and cut bits up to make it quicker and more digestible. If you did want live content fully, let me know.